Hello everyone. Welcome to the online lecture of vehicle testing and homologation. I am Milan Trivedi, assistant professor at LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. In today's lecture, I am going to show you the different contents of our vehicle testing and homologation. But before going into that, that particular topic, let me just elaborate the different stages of learning in the field of automobile engineering. So let's just start with the basic learning. First of all, we understand the automobile fundamentals, which actually includes the different measurement parameters such as towing, camber, caster and all the relevant parameters. Once you are clear about the basic fundamentals of the automobile, then we move towards the second part that is the design and manufacturing. Then we start to learn about the design part that how to design the particular automobile, how the different co components are being attached. Then we understand the different manufacturing technologies that how that components are being manufactured. But once these components are being manufactured, the third part arises is the testing part. We need to have a proper testing methods by which we can actually validate that part that this particular component can be put on into the market, we can sold that particular component. So the testing parts comes last, that's why we particularly study this subject after understanding the automobile fundamentals, after understanding the design manufacturing concept, the third stage is about the testing and validation part. So in this particular testing and validation part, we need to understand the lot of different different concepts of the testing. But let us just start with the basic part that why this testing is important in the field of automobile engineering. The first and the foremost thing is the testing to check the proper working of the component. If we take only one component of the automobile, let us take a one wheel assembly. If we take this particular wheel assembly itself, it is having n number of components attached together. So we need to ensure that when this number of components are assembled together, that is working okay or not. So the first part is to check the working of the component. The second aspect is about the emission part. We need to ensure that the vehicle is having emission of gases in a particular content. For example, in India we are following Bharat stage norms. Recently it has been a topic of discussion that BS6 vehicles was announced. Before that, the BS4 norms was there and it was said that now onwards BS4 vehicles would not be uh, sold into the particular market. So what is that BS4 norms, BS6 norms? That is actually setting a limit of different different gases which has been coming out from the exhaust pipe. Say for example, uh, amount of carbon dioxide has been fixed under this BS6 norms that is must be under 0.06 gram per uh, movement of per kilometer, right? So in such a way, the guy guidelines has been given. So according to that a vehicle is there or not that has been checked under this particular testing part. The third part and the foremost important part is to check the safety part. In India or globally NCAP agency is doing this particular safety testing part and this the vehicle is allowed to actually collide with certain front collision or front impact test has been done in order to ensure that is there any test happen or oh sorry damage is happening to this particular occupant or not or how does this particular car body is protected that has been checked under this particular part. Now this is all about the testing part that how or why it is actually important in order to ensure the proper working of the vehicle. Now let us just elaborate that which is the different contents we actually need to understand in the vehicle testing and homologation part. Let us just start with the first topic. The first topic in our VTH would be the homologation. I am just going to elaborate the definition right now. Homologation is actually the process of getting certificate in order to ensure the vehicle is roadworthy and it is following all the norms which is laid out by the government. Whether it is a testing of bolt, axles, wheel rims, body shell, suspension, engine components, chases, all around the testing of the components would be done under this particular homologation part. And if it is satisfying or it has been approved under all the testing part, then only the vehicle would be certified, then only the vehicle can be sold into the market. Now, government in India had actually 
given this work to seven different testing agencies that is ERAI Automotive Research Association of India, Vehicle Research and Development Establishment, Central Institute of Road Transport, Indian Institute of Petroleum, Central Farm Machinery Training and Testing Institute, International Center of Automotive Technology, Northern Region Farm Machinery Training and Testing Institute. Basically, these are the seven testing organization in India which is carrying out the testing part. The second chapter we are going to understand is about the engine test. Now coming to this particular engine test part itself, we are having n number of tests in the engine itself. Say for example, the air which is taken inside the engine part, that is suction of the air, that um, volume of air is required to be measured. Then the fuel consumption, amount of fuel which is taken by the uh, particular engine, the pressure which is being generated inside the combustion chamber, the temperature which is raised out, the amount of brake power which is generated at this particular engine shaft, the amount of indicated power which is generated. So these are the different parameters which can be evaluated under this engine testing part. The third chapter would be about the noise, vibration and harshness. This noise and vibrations are defined as a part of single coin itself two sides of a single coin. If noise is there, vibration would be there, vibration is there, noise would be there. And our vehicle is actually subjected to lot of noise and vibration, right? So we need to understand which are the different internal sources of noise, which are the different external sources of noise, and which are the different ways to eliminate that particular noise which is coming out. And in later part, we are also going to discuss about this harshness parameter. Harshness is actually uh, term which is very difficult to measure, but it is actually a feeling which is associated with the noise and vibration. In the fourth chapter, we are going to discuss about the performance testing part. Now in this particular main topic would be the energy conservation part. Yes, the energy conservation here indicate that how much energy has been consumed at the different different body parts or the different different components of the automobile. For example, here we just going to study this particular topic in brief that amount of 2.5 percentage of fuel efficiency goes into accessories part itself, 17 percentage goes into the idling, 33 percentage goes into exhaust, 29 percentage of engine heat goes into the friction loss. Apart from that, almost 3 percentage goes into aerodynamic drag, 4.9 percentage goes into rolling resistance, 5.5 percentage goes into the braking energy. So these are the different energy losses which is come happening into this particular automobile. That's the reason out of the 100 percentage of fuel input, we are just receiving only 13 to 15 percentage of fuel efficiency. In the fifth chapter, we are going to study about the road and track testing. Here the concept is that the efficiency of the fuel or the efficiency of the particular engine not only just depend on the overall different different components of the automobile, sometimes it depends on the different road or traveling condition also. So for that we are actually doing the different track testing in the particular automobile. Uh, the most of the agencies are developing the special tracks on which the vehicle performance can be evaluated such as they develop a dry track, wet track, dynamic track, gradient track water weight track, under such conditions how the vehicle is behaving that has been evaluated out. The sixth chapter and the important part of the VTH that is a Chases dynamometer. We are going to understand the concept of the Chases dynamometer. This Chases dynamometer is nothing, normal dynamometer will indicate the brake power, but the Chases dynamometer will indicate it the power which is available at the wheels of the particular automobile and it would be mounted on such kind of assembly. We are going to study in detail about that. But along with this Chases dynamometer test which is used to measure the power which is available at the wheels, we can measure number of different different tests which we discuss in the second chapter. That part can also be evaluated under this kind of setup such as fuel measurement the exhaust gas measurement, the smoke measurement can also be evaluated under this particular setup itself. So 
Under this category, we are also going to see about two-wheeler chassis dynamometer and the four-wheeler chassis dynamometer. This is just the outlook of the two-wheeler chassis dynamometer, a roller which is attached with the normal dynamometer that can be eddy current or hydraulic dynamometer, which will give you the value of the torque which is available at the wheels. We are going to elaborate that part in detail. The seventh chapter, that is a bit interesting chapter, that is a safety system. Coming to the safety system of automobile, we are having two broad categories to understand. The first one is the active safety system and the another one is a passive safety system. Active safety system is that safety system which is actually preventing the accident. That system will work to prevent the accident. Whereas the passive safety system will try to minimize the loss after the accident has been happened. Right? It will just try to reduce the impact of the accident and it will try to safeguard the occupant as well as the car body. So in this particular, we are going to elaborate the concept of front crumple zones, airbags, rear crumple zones, rear set belts, front set belts, side impact, collapsible steering wheels. These are the parts which will be elaborated under the seventh chapter. And the last chapter of the vehicle testing and homologation is about the standards. Whenever we talk about any manufacturing part, we talk about standards. Whenever we talk about the testing parts, we need to talk about these testing standards. In the field of automobile, we are also going to understand about the different standards, such as ISO standard, we all have heard about that. That also we will include, apart from that, SE standards, that Society of Automobile Engineers has also laid certain standards for testing part. The testing happens to the particular automobile, but that happens under the specific guidelines. So that also part, that part will also be evaluated under the state, uh, particular standards. Apart from that, we are having a different, different EIS standards that will be also discussed under this. So that's all about the different contents of the vehicle testing and homologation. We are going to discuss in detail, particularly in VTH. Finally, thanks for watching.